I'm spiritual. Yeah, well, demons are spirits too, babe. <laughs> my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so in today's video I'm going to be sharing some of the lessons that I have learned in Nollywood movies so a little bit of a backstory whenever I'm busy at school in America I'm always like oh my gosh guys I wish I had just time off time to breathe so I could just watch Nollywood movies in peace and enjoy myself because it connects me to my childhood would always watch it with my mom and stuff and you know those movies are like four hours long part one part two four hours each you know so since I've been back in SA I've actually been able I actually made a conscious effort to and have been able to watch some Nollywood movies so for those of you who don't know if you want to watch Nollywood movies guys YouTube is the plug literally just type in Nollywood movies or you can type in you know Van Vicker by the way as a South African I'm naturally inclined to say fun Vicar or Van Vicar, you know, but I think it's Van Vicar. But type in Van Vicar movies or any Edo movies or whatever, and basically, like, oh, everything pops up or Patience movies, and there's just this whole huge selection. The downside is that there might be ads depending on which page you use. Um, another downside might be quality, another downside might be sound depending on the ones you get. But for me, the ones I've been watching though have been pretty good. Sometimes the volume is a bit low, but pretty good the first lesson I'm gonna be talking about today is before you marry someone babe please go and confirm go and check that his mom or her mom your mother-in-law does not turn into a chicken a cat a snake at night wait what Jokes aside, the real lesson that I learned from this, apart from actually like for real, like, you know, a chick. Before you marry someone or you get into a deeply committed relationship, especially as someone who is Christian or if you have a religion that you follow, and especially as someone who wants to be with someone who also follows that religion. So I'm Christian, I believe in Jesus, and I would definitely love to be with someone who also believes in Jesus. Um, but before you get into a deeply committed relationship or a marriage, make sure you confirm what the beliefs of your fiance or your boyfriend girlfriend make sure you confirm what their beliefs are because in the long run it can cause so many problems for you especially especially spiritually like you know if there's one thing that you don't need you know there's witches from your mother's side there's witches from your father's side you know there's witches from church because you know we know there's witches in church then there's witches from the world the last thing you need is dealing with a mother-in-law who's also a witch and I also I don't believe well first of all I believe that witches and warlocks are real and second of all I, I don't believe they're good but essentially what I'm saying is you can face so much trouble in your life in your marriage in your relationship simply because you're with someone who believes in something contrary to what you believe in something that goes against your spirit quick story time i watched this movie actually right where this guy is christian and his mom is christian and then he's engaged to this other girl so ha, huh, guys next thing now it's the introduction he goes to introduce himself to the family then him and his homeboys run into a snake then they kill the snake okay now next thing few weeks later his girlfriend comes or his fiance comes and she's so upset he's like baby what's wrong and she's like our queen mother got killed hey guys do you know who the queen mother is the queen mother was the snake and i don't mean the queen mother is a human that turns into a snake i mean the queen mother is a full-time big ass python and you know when kids are born the snake comes to wrap around the kids and you know but um who child <laughs> you know <laughs> woo <laughs> and it's one of those customs that they felt it has to be carried on as they go forward so something you need to remember is when you are committed to someone and you may want to marry them or be with them long term you're not just gonna be with them you're also gonna be with their family and there are some customs that they hold true and they want to follow through that may not align with yours and there are some things that you can't compromise on so for instance me ne me ne as I, me, as you see me, if my man came and said, "Listen, babe, um, 
you have to wrap a snake oh holy ghost fire blood of jesus i'm out you know respect to your beliefs you can go practice it but <laughs> not not with me not with anything that pops out of my womb thanks very much the next lesson that i learned is be careful who you sleep with and also be careful of picking up people from the street, the road, the clubs, because you just might pick them up. Next thing, they'll turn into a snake when you guys are busy having sex. Hey! Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Or post sex, you'll wake up and there's a snake. Or, you'll go to, or they'll go to the bathroom. When you go look for them, honey, honey, <laughs> you'll see they've turned into a snake. Somebody come and look at this. Have you guys heard those stories in real life? I'm not gonna lie, I've actually heard about that story twice i've heard about that story twice so the first one i heard was about in, in limpopo actually where a lady uh, was picked up by a random man who was rich and he took care of her and then he took her to his house and then he didn't sleep with her but he put her in a different room then in the middle of the night he was like i'm coming in but don't be alarmed and then when he came in it was a snake or something along those lines or he turned into a snake look at this these are not my stories though, please. <laughs> it's not people I know, I'm just telling you what I heard. Um, but he went and picked someone up and then he she, she turned into a snake, pretty much. I wanna hear from people who are, uh, you know, spiritual and, and, and stuff like that is, you know, as a person who's not experienced that stuff face to face and I don't want to, thank you. Uh, do you guys think it actually happens? Like, do you think they actually turn into snakes? Like, live jive, real life, proper just boom, snake. Do you guys think it really happens that way? Or you don't think it's true? The real lesson behind this is, uh, you know, as much as they might turn into a snake, I don't know. Um, but the real lesson is be careful who you give yourself to, be careful who you have sex with. Besides pregnancy, sex is the only way for two humans to really be inside of each other and be connected like that. Sex is a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing and soul ties are real. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. If you want to know more, go check out this video that I did about everything you need to know about I guess celibacy, but also touching on sex and soul ties. I've heard so many testimonies at my church and some videos that I've watched online which maybe you must say with a pinch of salt but i've heard so many testimonies of women who actually say and men alike of women and men who actually say i sleep with people and after i sleep with them nothing works out for them anymore they lose their job they lose their money um some people like that's how like you sleep with someone and then you you know the money comes to you like all of this stuff is going to sound crazy if you are not a spiritual person if you don't believe in that side of spirituality i personally believe in spiritual stuff i'm a spiritual person and i'm a christian spiritual person one thing about spirituality guys there's two sides of the coin of spirituality holy spirit evil spirit good spirits bad spirit be wary of people who are like oh no you know I'm spiritual. Yeah, well, demons are spirits too, bye. Now, taking a break from snakes and stuff, the next point is, and this is something that I learned recently, or that I, a movie made me realize recently, but people can find God through your charity. As Christians, we are always instructed to give and we are promised that God will give back to us, you know, pressed down, shaken together. And th that is true, but giving is not just about giving a person money or food and and you're doing a good task or good deed by giving them food but by you giving especially when you give and you talk about god you know or you're like just talk to the person and and you're open about your faith and and some people like i know there have been times for me where i've given and it was god who put it in my heart to like give to this person or give to this foundation and if i give to a person then i have the opportunity to like be like you know what god told me that i should do this but people find god through your charity because your act of giving is like an extension of god god's hand god is giving with your hand you know, people have foul perceptions of Christians that they're, you know, they're just not great things or great people, whatever. But the essence of Christianity is love. And to give is to love, you know. I feel like it's one way to show love. And people should see love through you. When they encounter you, they should feel and see love. You know, if you give someone food and you talk about God or you give them whatever and, and you, you share your faith with them, it'll, it shows them that, oh, these are God's people. This is what God is about. This God has provided for me. 
you know because the thing is when you give to someone you think it's just you and just your hand but God is using you and you find that that person might have been making a prayer saying God I don't know what I'm gonna eat tonight and there you come along giving them food and so they see God through you they see God's hand through your charity your charity or your giving can make someone believe in a God they never believed in because help never came from anywhere else up until now where you were led by God to give. Giving, I feel, can be a form of evangelism. Take this as a reminder today for you to give, whether it's your time, money, food, clothing, but you know, give, give in the name of God, guys, because someone is waiting to discover Christ through what you have to give. The next lesson that I learned is, for those of you who got asked out by that village baby, you know what I'm saying? Like, that village girl that looks like her life is going nowhere and like ah nothing is going on and you say no because me i don't want to be with villagers please i'm from the city i want a city man eh. my friend better go out on a date with that girl now Pella, maybe her destiny is to be like the richest woman in the world you know but right now it's just the the trial stage the testing stage bruh before she gets to the rich stage um but jokes aside i'm not telling you to go out with anyone just because you know yeah i make joke i'm joking but the lesson that i learned from this is do not look down on people because of their position in society or because they are down in the current moment because guys your things turn around in this life i've seen it in my personal life i've seen it in the lives of those around me someone who was once your boss can become your employee someone who was once your employee becomes your boss things turn around guys and you should not treat people badly because they don't have money they don't have as much as you because money does not define a person's worth money is not your worth and if money is worth if that's you right now then how much are you worth based on your bank account right now? Should we respect you based on your account balance right now? Right now! Should we respect you? Uh oh, uh, damn. Hell oh. Uh. I was watching a TD Jake sermon where he was like, God analyzes you when you are in your period of advantage. Meaning, when you are in a position of advantage, what do you do? And I don't mean power or being rich, I mean just advantage. When you have advantage, how do you behave? How do you treat people? Do you give back? And if God cannot trust you in your period of advantage, he cannot trust you with power. Hence that verse also, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Some of you want to be rich, not because you want to give back, you want to help people, but because you just want to be rich. Because you want the money, the cars, the hose and the clothes. Like that's, that's, that's all you want, just vibes. No charity in sight, just vibes. The next point I want to talk about is, your elders are not automatically correct because they're your elders. They don't automatically know better because they're your elders. How many of you right now have been in positions where you are educating your parents, your all-knowing parents? And that's the thing. I think that's something that's wrong with African culture is we give this all-knowing uh, credit to elders and elders themselves demand this all-knowing respect and uh, an all-knowing credit acting as if they know everything things like you never say an old person is lying but you are you are lying you're not always right you don't know everything and you need to be called out you need to be corrected Guys, uh, something i've seen in nigerian movies is you know you'll have elders who want to force you into these arranged marriages that are not good for you in the end or they want you to cuddle with snakes you know and you do it because they're your elders and they know better there come a time where you as a young person have to make your stand you know if right now if you are christian and you don't believe in cuddling with snakes which i do not and your uncle your mom or whoever tells you to come and cuddle with a snake you have to be able to think for yourself to know for yourself and say no i'm not going to do that because you will suffer the, the repercussions or the consequences of busy cuddling with demonic snakes older people are not always right and they can lead you astray it is so important for you to learn how to think for yourself and to learn how to find your voice and when you do speak to older people and you want to correct them or say i don't want to be a part of that learn how to deliver your message as well you know you're not going to go to be like well i'm no better than you this is why your husband left you oh 
Shut up, that's an insult. The last point that I'm going to be talking about, okay, which might be also one of the important ones, guys. Eh, please, oh, wake up in the middle of the night, eh, and check that your husband is there in your bed. Do you hear me? Check he's there in your bed and that he's not gone to meet up with his occultic homies so he can sacrifice you for wealth and riches. And I, oh. Are you the real lesson behind this is actually young women especially do not be carried away by rich men and their money Yo, S.A. Hans, S.A. Hans, S.A. Hans and all hands generally speaking Bruh. Some women can be so carried away by money that you don't care to understand where does his money come from? Does his business make sense? Like like trace it understand it you're just blown away by money next thing you're sleep you're sleeping with one demonic man eh? at night he's half human half snake you don't care because there's money next thing your womb is taken out of you now you can't have kids for the rest of your life or you only give birth to kids they die early or something like that some of you are giving away your destinies your wombs your futures everything for a new handbag Please, 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 guys. This is actually a very serious chat. Some of you are prostituting yourself to these men, these men who are hitting you, these men who end up killing you. I mean, what about uh, Sandile who killed Karab? Didn't he admit to using her for some kind of ritual? You know what I mean? But apart from that point, the other aspect also is it's so important to always just pray for yourself and pray for your family. Pray that you don't make a mistake in marriage, first of all. But as you are married, pray for your husband, pray for your wife, pray for your family because people change and people become influenced and a man who was never money hungry becomes money hungry and is willing to do anything or a woman at that I don't want to make it seem easy like oh it's simple to figure out it can be challenging but just stay prayed up is what I'm saying okay I'm actually sorry for ending on like a kind of samba point kind of sad I'm sorry about that one but anyway guys those are some of the lessons that I've actually learned from Nollywood movies down in the description box I'm going to include some links to some Nollywood movies and if there are any that you guys think I should watch then please comment down below and I'll try to check them out and that's it for today guys I hope you liked this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and I will be back with more videos Peace and love, guys.